Hello everyone and welcome back to Mixbus TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. I'm your host David and I hope you're having a great day. In this video I'm gonna show you how easy it is with Superior Drummer 3 to trigger a real drum recorded with few mics, maybe not sounding that great, and transform it into a professional sounding kit using only SD3 core library and the internal plugins on SD3. Here we go. All right, guys, so this just wants to be an example of how easy it is to retrigger a real drum with Superior Drummer 3. So I picked a fairly simple drum pattern and I'll keep it short and to the point. I want to give you the bread and butter of it when you have a situation like this. Uh, we have five microphones. The green tracks are the original recorded drum. Let's take a listen to it. Okay, it's fairly simple as you heard, but we have the basics, kick, snare, hi-hat mic, a floor tom mic, and overheads. So we have pretty much all the elements you can find on a real recorded drum to trigger with Superior Drummer 3. So for this example, I'm going to use only as the three core library, and then we'll see if I add more sample still from the same library to make it sound better we'll see that later but the first thing that we do when we have a real recorded drum is to open the tracker tab and import our audio files the real drum into superior drummer 3. we can do it in two ways we can click to add and then go to the folder where our files are in my case they should be here, audio files, and import kick, hi-hat, floor, then what we have, overheads, and snare. So we have very little microphones, but this is enough elements for us to trigger Superior Drummer 3 and make this average recording a professional sounding drum kit. And by the way, you can also just drag your audio files into the tracker tab instead of clicking add and import them. The first thing that I'm going to do since I want to replace completely this drum recording is to turn all the mix knobs here to 100%. So I don't get any of the original sound, but only the triggered sound from Superior Drummer 3. One thing that I want to say is Superior Drummer 3 is probably the best algorithm that I've ever seen. It recognizes the instrument, it's very accurate with the triggering, with what to trigger, what not, just by importing the tracks. In my experience, you need very, very little tweaking. Just import the tracks and take a look. For example, here on the snare, you can see it's picking up a little bit of bleed from the kick. That's that's so easy to solve. I will show you in a minute. But let's take a look at the kick first. The kick looks perfect. You can see here from the markers, there's no missed triggers. There's no, no missed hits either. So kick is fine. It, that's usually the case. Kick is very easy to trigger. Snare, let's take a look at the snare. You can see there are some hits that are triggered by the bleed of the kick. Now you have two choices here. You can adjust the velocity and just turn it up so that those missed triggers disappear. You can see. And now they're not there anymore. Or you can manually detrigger the mistriggered hits if there are few, usually that's what I do. Or the third option, you can select a track. In this case, we select the kick because the mistriggers on the snare track are coming from the bleed of the kick into the snare mic. We can select here on the reduce bleed panel, we can open it, select our kick track, click OK and then reduce the bleed. You see? 
the miss triggered which correspond to our kick hits that are bleeding into the mic of the snare are disappearing as you can see there are a few hits still that are not our kick bleed so in this case what i'm gonna do is i'm going to adjust the velocity of the snare you can see this four five miss triggers i'm gonna just turn the velocity up a little bit and we have a clean snare midi track we know miss triggers and all the hits in place pretty perfect so this is how long it takes <laughs> to trigger a snare drum it's done now let's listen to the hi-hat which looks triggered well too okay let's solo it for a second because i think it got the wrong articulation while the original hats is doing this it's closer that's an easy fix with superior drummer 3 is not a big deal we will export the midi tracks and with the play style uh, tab we will change the articulation in one move you will see it in a second let's listen to the floor which is here a little earlier than where we are okay it's all this part at the beginning let's play that and remove the loop that's good looks good looks perfect what can I say? <laughs> you see it with your eyes, guys. I just imported the Tom track in. It's picking up each and every hit perfectly synced. No missed triggers. I'm taking a look at the whole piece. But I don't see any error. Yeah. There's only this one last hit, which is picking up the snare, and we just select that one and the trigger it. Done. And all these, following the tom part, we can just select them all and detrigger manually, or we can just adjust the velocity as we did for the snare, but is eating some hits here in this part, so we'll put the velocity back select all the missed triggers at the end and just detrigger them let's take a look at the beginning if there's anything wrong everything looks perfect and i just imported the tom track in and superior is that good at reading what it is assigning to the correct drum piece and retriggering it and for this example i'm using superior drummer 3 core library only and i loaded a preset called pearl default you can find it in the clean kits now that we have our midi tracks we just export all tracks combined we drag them into the song creator here we close this tab and the first thing that we do is adjust that hi-hat here in the edit tab style we have this open hat which doesn't match our drum we simply just select all our hats here and go and change articulation to let's try edge one let's see how it sounds much better okay so that was easy and again you can adjust the velocity the dynamic you can randomize the hits you can quantize the hits if you want but let's play our drum all right i think we're good and this is just an example and you can see superior drummer already triggered the symbol by itself that's like <laughs> magic Let's hear the end. Okay, these are a little weak. So we are going to turn them up. 
select them and turn the velocity up. Let's play. Okay, better. So now we have our entire song here on the song creator. At the bottom, we have all our instruments. What we are going to do now is do a little bit of mixing of this drum and try to make it sound a little more powerful, a little more polished, using only the plugins inside Superior Drummer 3. Let's start by looking at the mixer and see what channels this preset gives us. So we have our kick in, out, kick sub, snare top and bottom, hi-hats, all the rack and floor toms, overhead dynamics and an ambient ribbon mic. Right there, we already have a room track that we didn't have in the original recording. So that's very nice. Also, all the multi mic elements like kick, three microphone, snare, two microphones are already routed to their own summing buses. And when mixing, we are probably going to work on these yellow tracks here because it's easier, it's faster, more efficient. And most important, we will avoid screwing phase between kick in and kick out by working on individual channels. So this kind of summing, bussing all the kick mics, all the snare mics to their own bus is exactly what I would do if I was mixing a real drum. Here we already have it, it's pretty handy. So let's start, so let's play our drum and see what we can do. Sounds pretty good already, but for example, the kick drum for me is a little weak. So let's see if we can find another one. That's already much better. That's better too. That's nice. Just for the sake of simplicity, let's go with the second one, the second pearl that I liked. That's nice. Okay. So now let's see if we can add some bottom end by adding another sample to open. Kicks are selected and Let's audition some. That's nice. Okay, if I want low end, one of these two seem appropriate. I like the deeper one better. Stack to open. Let's play it. Much better. Already. The only thing that I would like is to shorten this one a little bit. It's nice, it's full, it sounds awesome by itself, but it's a little bit too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute the main one and open the envelope and offset tab for our new sample and shorten this one. Let's solo it. better already. Let's make it 350. So without. Again, it's nice when it sounds by itself. But it's a much tighter sound in the kit. Let's unsolo. All right, let's go to the mixer and take a look at where it's bust. X kick in, out, and X sub are already bust to output one and two, which is our kick. So everything is bust correctly. Let's start by EQing this kick drum a little bit. Sounds good already, but we can take it a step further. Just removing little bit of boxiness around 500.
Now let's see the bottom end. Let's solo our kick for a second. Let's try to find where the lowest frequency, the lowest usable frequency is, let's say about 50. Let's bump a little bit and cut. And I'm actually going to use a 24. That's too much. The stock EQ from Spirit Drummer 3 is pretty nice. Let's add a little bit of click and unsolo. Better. Without the EQ and with the EQ. All right, so like I said, we'll keep this pretty basic. Let's add a little bit of compression and let's start with the compressor 76. Let's hear how this sounds. It's all included in Spirit Drummer 3. That's nicer already. Yeah, let me solo the kick. Let's see if we can push it a little more. That is fine. Let's play with the release. We don't want it too slow. Although it's kind of nice. Without. That's a lot better. I like this. Let's let's leave it like this and unsolo the kick. That's pretty nice. Without the effects. Okay, we control the low end, which is nice, but takes a lot of headroom away. It's a little tighter. Let's make the release a little faster. And just to give it some more bite, there's one effect in Spirit Drummer 3 that I really like, if I can find it, which is in Distortion, no Dynamics, yes, is the Punch Exciter. I don't remember which one. I think it's the other one. It's the Punch Exciter 361. Let's solo the kick for a second again. This is nice. He adds a lot of level. I like this one better. I say let's just keep the sound and lower the level. All right, that's good. That's good for our kick. Let's go to the snare. Let's see if we can add at least another sample to it. Let's add to center. Let's stay in the core library. There's one snare that I like. Is this the Ludwig Colosseum? Let's stack to center. See how it sound. Without and with. So our snare already sound better. I want a little less ambient 
on the snare because the kick is pretty dry is drier than the snare and I want to keep the kit a little tighter so what we can do is to go into our ambient ribbon mic solo it and you can see here I can adjust the bleed from instruments I can remove the snare altogether I can even edit the stack but I'm just going to work on the instrument as a whole. Bring it a little down. That's already better. Let's listen to the overhead. That's fine. What I want to do is EQ a little bit the ambient mic. Let's use the Neve-like EQ. Let's solo it. Alright, I will not touch anything else. Let me see how it sounds in the mix. Better. I like the top boost. Let's compress the ambient mic a little bit. And again, let's try with the comp. Let's try to smash it pretty hard. go all bottom mode let's make the release so that it's pumping somewhat in time this is nice The attack of the 1176 is fast no matter what, but let's keep it halfway. And now we have the option to do parallel compression inside the 1176. So let's blend some of the super compressed signal in. Let's rebalance the output. Hear it in the mix. That's a lot already. Without. That's nice. Let's leave it at that. It's just an example. So then what we have, we have the tom. Let's listen to that part of the track. We had the floor tom playing, so I'm gonna listen to the floor tom and the ambient. I wanna reduce the bleed of the tom going into the ambient, so Go into the Bleed From Instrument tab, bring the floor tom down. That's about how much I want. I don't like too much tom bleed into the ambient mic. It gets boomy really fast. And we compressed the ambient mic anyway, so this is as much as I want it. Let's go and listen to this tom. And again, let's see if we can add a sample to it. Let's solo it. Well, first of all, 
Let me EQ this tom. Because there's a lot of cardboard sound. Like in every tom, <laughs> pretty much. We are gonna make it deeper. We're gonna cut the low end that we don't need. And again, to do this, we boost the Q and we listen for the lowest usable frequency or the fundamental of the tom. about here let's make it 70 let's reduce the Q 18 dB is fine and then let me see if yeah let's do this a little more body so a little higher of a frequency we're gonna boost here couple of db and i'm gonna reduce a little bit the q actually you know what i'm gonna compress it first let's add a little top end i'm gonna compress it first because we are going to probably lose some low end when compressing i'm gonna use the compressor limiter stock for once and see how it works Pressing a lot already. I just want to keep the attack fairly slow. The release so that it controls it and it doesn't let too much of a tail coming up. Let's make up for about 5 dB. That's okay. Maybe a little less. Let's just do this. That's here in the mix. That's nice. Let's try to add that punch exciter that I like. Better. Without, with a little less, let's adjust the level. That's okay. Let me see just to try if I, well, first of all, you know what? We can do the same thing that we did with the kick and just turn the release a little lower so our thumb gets a little bit tighter. Not this tight. <laughs> That's better. That's better. So you see how much more control we have now that we have our samples instead of the original recording, which by the way, one could add to the samples, but I couldn't have done this with a, with a recorded original Tom to just make it tighter after the recording. Here I can. So this is pretty impressive. Just to see if we can find some, let's try to add a new sample, another sample to this floor tom here we stay in the core library toms and let's audition some now with toms is tricky because they are tuned differently let's try this one without I like it. We need to adjust it a little bit in the mixer. 
but it definitely adds a lot to the tom sound output one and two so as usual let's work on the ambient bus a little bit you know what let's just lower the ambient bleed generally from this knob you can make it see tighter right away that's better Again, let's EQ this a little bit. Let's take out a little bit of this resonance here, which is a little too overwhelming. I like a little high end on the ambient. That's enough. Better. That's actually too much. Because we have the exciter already, we don't need that much high end. Overhead sounds fine. What I'm gonna do now is just take a listen to the hi-hats really quick, which we triggered. If it needs anything. Sounds pretty sweet. Let's just EQ. Yeah, what we don't need there use steep filter we don't fear anything here sounds pretty nice by itself so I'm not gonna do much to it but I want to do something that I do on pretty much all my mixes which is sending my kick and snare to a mono crush drum bus so we're gonna select our kick and snare and send them to let's say bus 7 and we'll call this Mono Crush. And we solo it. So we have our kick and snare going there. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a let's try something else. Let's try the limiter pedal. You know, it's pretty nice. We'll leave that on and we'll try to add some distortion. Let me try the tape simulator. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Just make sure that if you add something like this on a parallel channel, you don't use any wow and flutter because we are paralleling kick and drum and we don't want change in, in you know, phase shift with the wow and flutter when we put something like this uh, tape simulator or anything like that. We want to keep that as zero, otherwise it's going to be a phase mess. But let's hear how it sounds with and without. sounds nice it's pretty accurate even in the behavior of the speed like somewhere in between 15 and 30 closest to 15 that's fine the bias eats up a little bit of transient which is what I want for my parallel mono crush without a lot tighter that's nice so let's hear it in the mix without with the mono crush let's put it at the right level Without. Okay, so 
here's a good example. In this case, I like the sound of the mono crush, but now I have too much low end. And instead of EQing the mono crush, the parallel channel, which could cause a phase problem with the dry signal, with the uncompressed signal, I'm going to EQ the source. I'm going to EQ the kick that I'm sending to this parallel channel. So by taking out the low end from the source, I will bypass any possible phase problem to begin with. We will just lower the Q in this case. There you go. We were here before. That's nice, already better, but again, without the rest of the song is also very hard to gauge how much low end this kick drum should have. These are just examples. But one thing that I want to do here is to tighten this kick drum a little more because with the compressed ambient, with, with the mono crush, it's again a little too long. So I'm going to use the transient designer here, which is the easiest way to get rid of some detail. There you go. <laughs> it's that easy. Okay. So now because I can do this, I can raise the level of my ambient a little bit without the kick drum being too long or too boomy. Okay. And we started with a five microphone average recording of a drum. Now we have all this control to, you know, shorten our samples, change our samples, adjust the envelope, adjust the attack and mix within Spirit Drummer 3. It's pretty impressive. On the output bus, because this drum already sound good. Let's try the Comp 670 just a little bit. See how it sound on the output bus. Wow, it's grabby. And it's very colored already. I really just want a little bit of this. Yeah, that's nice. It comes in mid side mode by default. I just noticed this. So by compressing the sides so that the snare gets ducked a little more than on the mid channel, create a nice movement in the stereo field. If we compensate for that a little more, enhance the stereo. That's too much. Let's make it two. This compressor has a nice color, by the way. That's really tight. You know what? Let's not compensate. Let's just do 1.5 on the side. And let's leave the mid channel as is. That sounds really nice. I don't know if you guys can hear the difference from the video, but it really glues the, the kit together, this compressor. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I wasn't expecting that. So this drum really doesn't need anything else. I could try to add, I don't know, some saturation of some sort, but it would just, you know, be to try something because this, this drum already sounds good enough for me. And you have so much control at this point having our samples instead of the recorded uh, drum kit, we would have been stuck with that otherwise. With this one, there's there's so many things you can do. Once you inject this drum into a mix and you have all the other instruments, the control you have is pretty much unlimited. So there's really, there's really nothing to add here. Uh, once you're done, you can export your track by selecting the track export song as audio files and here you have all the options 24 bit of course one track active and in the advanced tab you can bounce output channels 
individually and you can bounce microphone channels individually split the stereo and everything so this is it for today i hope you like this video guys but if you have any question please leave them in the comment down below let me know and i'll get to them check out the other videos on superior drummer 3 and that's a wrap this is it for this video guys i hope you liked it and i hope it was useful check out the other videos dedicated to superior drummer 3 let me know what you think in the comments down below and please leave us a like and share the video around follow mixbuzz tv on twitter facebook to stay up to date with all the news upcoming videos please keep supporting the channel by sharing the videos on forums blogs social media subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time